I lowered the camera a bit to give you a little bit more of a straight in shot. Uh, it does have about a 15 degree angle from the pitch of the edge of the port going right on in. And now that uh, there's no guide there, you can just see. Now let's back up and see if I can get uh, both of the shots in. Let's go over here. And let me see if I can get a little bit. Here we go. Hold on. Try to use the outer lines. Now look at this. You can just see. Look at the big old chunk of God sticking up. Look at the amount I cut. Alright, I'm going to loosen up and give us a pan here. Let's zoom in. Now let's come over here. Wow! You tell me that ain't a difference. Now the cross-sectional area is probably a 10 to 15 percent increase on the exhaust. CC wise, I would say 10 to 12. The minimum would be a 10 cc difference. And guess what, boys and girls? It's only on the roof that this is happening. Nothing's getting touched on the bottom and it'll go straight across. Look how it's got that deviant ass line going right up to it. That's about stupid. They should have carried the casting all the way through. But anyway, look, straight in valve guide. Come over here. No valve guide. Coming down a swoop, hugging the roof because that's the air pressure it's going to be. To turn this into a race head, I would go in here Weld the meat up to about right here. Man, I mean, this is just textbook here, buddy. I'd weld off that area there at least a half inch, come up, bring it up, and right there I'd probably pick up uh, 50 foot pounds of torque. All right, I'm really falling in love with this head. I really am because it's so weird, so unusual with the moon, half moon, and the sun, and then this awesome exhaust in the chamber. Uh, Anyway, all right, I just wanted to show you the difference. There we go. You see what we're going for. We'll continue on later on. I get this shape done, and I've saved the best for last, the combustion chamber, because what a damn mess that is. You won't believe how bad to be a half hemispherical combustion chamber that just putting the surty machine on it and a radius cutter just destroyed the wet flow. The combustion chamber is easily going to be 20 to 25 percent of the issue here, and it's not nothing to do with unshrouding. It has all to do with shape and wet flow characteristics. All right. Now that we've taken care of the guide on the exhaust, the next thing, and this is especially true since we're looking for airflow numbers and atomization is to take care of this big bulky guide. Now some of it's already been touched, but that's just by the aluminum cutter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cast iron carbide and just go around the edges about maybe a half inch from the top. and just bullet nose the guide and give it an aerodynamic contour shape where it lines up with that blade comes in and can go around. Like I said, anywhere I can go in here and blend the shape, a better contour and a transition, this happens without removing a bunch of CCs. So rounding that and rolling it, then I'll go back in there with a straight tip and do my blending. It's amazing how much difference that little bit of stuff just makes when it keeps adding up. It's not one individual thing. 
Anyway, we're coming along pretty good about ready to conclude this stage 3 MPG mode head bite cylinder head. So now I'm getting ready to lay into the combustion chambers and do what I got to do in there. Okay. I'm going to try to give you a couple of views here. But here is a major problem and a major area that I'm going to really make a difference on the performance of the head and the gas mileage. Notice the seats. This was done with a seat, um, a combustion chamber um, shaping tool, a radius cutter is what it's called. That's where after the valve job's done, it goes in there and hits the area right around. Well, the problem is, look at this gigantic ridge. It's called Machinist Ridge. And from the edge of the seat, man, I bet it's probably 150 thousandths tall of a ridge that the airflow can't get around the valve. It's causing all kinds of turbulence. Hitting it and just a tremendous horsepower loss. This thing goes all the way around. Let's get another position here. Look right here where the spark plug area is. You can just see the ridge. Boom, boom, just terrible. Now, what I'll do is I'll put a couple of valves in there and go in here and pull this whole ridge and blend it right off into the aluminum. I cannot emphasize enough how much this one trick right here Lowering it to unshroud, getting this 100 to 150 thousandths radius ridge that's in fact keeping the air from flowing around the valve. As it lifts, it's got this big chunk and it's throwing turbulent eddies, which is also causing a wet flow problem, turning vaporized fuel into liquid. It's just a, it's a horrible situation, but you know, this ain't a performance head. It's a daily street driver and these companies don't care. But just me going in here, pulling all that down, blending it like it's molded into the combustion chamber is going to make a tremendous difference on auto quality, drivability, and of course our main goal, miles per gallon. So I wanted to show you how that how big that ridge is. Look, I can take my, my sharp pointer and look at this. It stops it dead in its track. Look at that. And you can see the hump as it just pushes over it. I'm going to bring that down about 100 to 150 thousandths and roll it right off into the existing chamber. Then, of course, I'll go up here. This is an area right here I'm going to be able to move about 30 or 40 thousandths of meat from right here all the way over to right here to unshroud the valve in the shortest distance between two points which is going to be real low lift flow it's going to release a whole lot more air into the cylinder bore by going in here and unshrouding it here and then coming in here uh, on the exhaust side and unshrouding it right in there and pulling to here all right let's get on the combustion chamber shape and try to get this knocked out because this will be the last heavy hit and then it'll be time to blend it and pull it all in all right and now where we're at with this, I went in there, look at how I ground all them radiuses. I mean, I took that down, pulled it back about 80 or 90 thousandths, and then pulled it right into the combustion chamber. Now, there's nothing in the way. There will be some touch-up work I have to do, and this is where it takes a little time. I actually take a sharp stone on my uh, die grinder and touch the outer edge and pull it right into the 60 and then do the valve job. Uh, this is just going to be awesome. Now, it will lower the compression. What I'm done here would probably lower compression about, I'm going to guess, two cc's. Absolutely three tops, but more along the lines of two cc's. So maybe a couple of tenths in compression point, which is okay because when carbon builds up after a while, it'll bring it back. But it don't hurt these kind of heads one bit. It, the, the power increase is still going to be there along with the efficiency. But I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to put the valves in there and let, you, let me show you how I do it. Because, boy, right here is critical. You break that line, the head's junk. It's absolutely junk. you got to get it right on the money. I'm going to show you real quick because this is... Now, you can see where the dicom was. And, of course, now the dicom is starting to square away. However... The line where I scribed it is still there because it actually leaves a little bit of a peck scratch on the deck surface. Now, 
What you're doing here, and this is critical, you're letting it bounce on the valve, so you have to have an old valve. Fortunately for me, what happened was, and the valves aren't very expensive, both valves tax and all was 12 bucks, six dollars a piece, but fortunately, two of the valves were real thin on their margin. We actually needed all new valves in the head, but Two of them were really bad, so I was lucky enough that I can use these as dummies since they weren't good. Anyway, I take a little ball. This is about a quarter inch or a little bit bigger ball. And I start coming on the edge. And then I lay into it, but I'm putting pressure on the valve. Look how it's turning. Just letting it dance while I'm watching the amount of material that it's taken out of this edge right here because man I could really mess up this guy's head fast and that'd be a chunk of money I'd have to pay. See how it danced? I mean it's just so hard to control. Now see how I put a little pressure and let it dig a little deep right there? I actually let it go in. That was intentional. I did that on purpose. Then I come up. Now we don't have to go very far with this ball because I'm going to go back in there with my, with my straight finger and grab where the ball left off and pull this shape into play. I'll actually use this one because what I want to do is come in here and go up a little bit right here and trim it to give it a little bit more unshroud right there in that area so the ball don't get carried away with the ball and try to use it to dig combustion chamber meat. Okay, I just wanted to show you how easy it is, but to be careful, and it don't hurt to put a little bit of pressure and dig, but see, I've kept that line absolutely perfect as I've come around on it. This takes about three to four hours to lay these chambers this way, but the benefit is well worth it. You can't believe how much better and efficient this head's going to be when I'm done with it off of a little two-liter Ford head. All right, back to you in a minute when we do some more unshrouding. Well, I might as well show you one other thing. Hold on a minute. Um, I come up here on the top. I think I've showed you this, but what the hell. I go in here and pull on that and pull that into the spark plug. And you savvy guys out there that, that poured them on your own, um, especially you, Charles, I know you're watching this. You watch everything I do. I think you're a spy, dude. Anyway, I'm letting it, I'm letting the ball rotate. I'm actually using it as a go, no go gauge because it's going to give me the same circle where you see the shiny, the green, the shiny. It's going to do that size all the way around. So it's kind of like a radius machine in a way if I let it use the valve as a turning stone to go in there and unshroud it. So, just thought I'd point that out. Now, um, that the combustion chambers, I uh, unshrouded them with the ball and took in big giant hundred plus thousands machinist ridge out. I take my finger and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to blend where it left the little ridge where the ball cutter went in and pull it in. Here we go. Okay, now as you can see, basically all it done was catch off where the ball was and then pull that into the rest of the chamber. 
I'm going to go ahead and take this and it'll level blend all of it, not just that. Um, hold on. Um, I'll pull it off into here and roll it and then what we're going to have is right where that 30 degree valve angle comes up there'll be a little bit of 30 and then pow it rolls right into the chamber no obstructions nothing in the way nothing to be able to fool with the uh, wet flow characteristics of the head because there's nothing worse than going 100 miles an hour and hitting a brick wall and, and the way this was that's pretty much a, the summation of what you got all right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then we'll lay over and get the exhaust because we're just about getting to the end of this project. Mainly, we're running out of time. All right.